no one was in Kwakwa. Uh, I, 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 I lived with a certain uh, people there called uh, Baha Suswai. These people are greatly venerated by me. Uh, Suswai was the chief of uh, the traffic uh, department in Kwakwa. So his wife, uh, Masuswai, was running a store in a place called Sitzing. And then she, and then I was, I was, so I was working on this particular store. And as I was working on the store, so she would pay me. Uh, she would give me money and then I would save this money under the mattress. Then I paid for, to study with a, a school in England, a Trans World Education College, where I studied a journalism and professional writing. And I graduated in 1984. And then from there, I, I got hired as a TV journalist by SABC TV. I worked with one of the great legends called Zama Masondo, Zipindaba. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Zimbindaba, that's what he used to say. So it was myself, Zama Masondo, and a lady called Mfechwa from Eastern Cape that we, we worked there. So all this experience gave me an insight to understand the power of, of information, the power of, of, of knowledge, the power of, of education, and also the power of miseducation. And then, of course, uh, in 1987, I went into exile. I lived in northern Botswana. We were in the jungle there in northern Botswana. And then I lived there with the, on the, in the ANC camp in, in uh, northern Botswana. And um, I can recall, if you do a Google, there's an article I wrote, it's called um, A White God a white god. So I wrote this article, article a white god, because I was a Seventh-day Adventist member of the church, and uh, the church was always promoting this, the superiority of, 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 of Western ideas, you know, the morality, the ethics of Western ideas, but not African uh, ethics, not African uh, methods of knowledge. And of course, they teach about, you know, the white God. So I, I got to find out that actually the mind of the, uh, of the child is programmed by images. So they use images to change, to, to program our minds. The image number one, the image of a white institution, like a church, uh, a university, a school, a college, a bank, uh, a corporation, these are white institutions. And as a child, you're supposed to admire these and aspire to these institutions. And then the second image is the image of a white God, Jesus Christ. Very important. Which says that Mlungu, Mlungu, Mkulungu, You see. Uh, and then the third image is the image of a white dog. That says that the most beautiful thing is a mlungu. Hmm? These three images, my brothers and sisters, are very powerful. They are very powerful. Because you know, when the child asks the mother, looking at that. Uh, image of a white goat on the wall and says, who is this? The mother says, Kimudi Mumutu. Ngulungulu Lord. Umsoni Umsad. In the mind of the child, in the mind of the child. Mlungu is Ngulungu. Fanel Amsad. Amsoni. You see it corresponds with the chessboard. The chessboard. You see, and those are the ancestors who were talking to me about the chessboard, by the way. They were saying to me that my it's actually my name is here, I'm Sam, I keep all the ball. Barry, Bana Batari, Bana Hanakatsila Yena Ya chessboard. You see, that we conceptualize about life as a chessboard, and we are trying to navigate the intricate networks, the intricate maze of this chessboard. And there are rules of the chessboard that say that a black piece must take second position. It cannot take first position. And also there's a rule, then this one is not written, that says you cannot checkmate Mlungu. 
but Mlungu is allowed to checkmate you. I mean, the power of that. And that is done through the images. A white institution, image number one. A white God, image number two. A white doll, image number three. What is even powerful about the doll is that there is no longer with a gun saying, you must buy this white doll. It is the mother who brings the white doll from the mall somewhere, traveling with the black girl. And then maybe they look at the, white, the black doll and they see the black doll. But they're only going to spend a few seconds there. From there, they move to the section of the white doll. And then they're going to spend more time there. You'll see the smile from the mother. Oh, why won't I intake one poppy? Why won't I intake one child? And then from there, in the mind of the child, the child is saying, we spent only a few seconds at the, white, at the, at the black door. But we are speaking, spending a lot of time on the white door. So that means that a white door is better than a black door. I actually did a scientific study of this in a place called Deep Slot. And this study is inspired by a movie that I saw in North America called Separate But Equal, Separate but Equal by um, uh, Sidney Poitier, you see. There was a court case there where the African-Americans were fighting uh, to end segregation. And one of the arguments they were making was that the, the mind of the black child is damaged by segregation. So the court says, well, if they're damaged, you have to prove the damage. You have to demonstrate to us the damage. We are not just going to take your word that the, child, the, the mind of the black child is damaged. So what they did, they brought a, a Professor Clark. Professor Clark was a, is a black psychologist who did experimental studies on the mind of the black child using dolls, you see. And he demonstrated in court. What he did, he brought dolls, white dolls and black dolls, and put them on the, on, on, on the desk, on the table somewhere. And then they brought the black children, and they asked them to choose the dolls. They asked the child, which is the most beautiful doll? All the black kids, they, they pointed at the white doll as the most beautiful doll. And then they asked, which is the most intelligent doll? They pointed at the white doll. So I did the same thing in, in, in Deep Slot. So in Deep Slot, it was five black girls between the ages of five and seven. And then, uh, so they had three dolls that they were playing with. They had two white dolls and one black doll. Then, for me, it was an excellent opportunity. I said, excellent opportunity. Things, it doesn't get better than this. Then I called them all. These are all, actually, they are, they are mixed in terms of ethnic. So one, I think, is in Debele. And then uh, another one is Mtsuana. And I think another one is, is, a, is a Tsonga. And then the other one, Kibasut. So then I asked them, I said, these dolls are beautiful. They said, yes. I said, do you love these dolls? Yes. Then I started asking them. What, uh, what colors are the dolls? So they said to me, the white dolls, they don't say they are white. They say they are peach. And then I said to them, no, they're actually white. They said, no, they are peach, peach white. Then I said, these children are very intelligent because peach is actually the correct color. Then I asked them about the black doll. They said, no, that one is brown. Okay. Then I asked them, which doll is the most beautiful. They, they pointed at the peach dolls, that these ones, are, the peach dolls are the most beautiful. I said, which uh, dolls are the most intelligent? They pointed at the peach dolls, that the peach, peach dolls are the most intelligent. Then I asked them, uh, which dolls do you love a lot? Now, uh, four girls, they said, the peach dolls, they love them a lot. One girl who is an endeavor girl, she says uh, she loved the brown doll. So I could see that it means at the home of the endeavor girl, there are black dolls. See, that makes a difference. Okay. And then I asked them, 
If these dolls were to run in a race, which one would run faster? All of them, they say, the brown doll is going to run faster than the peach dolls. So that is the experiment that uh, came out in deep slot. So uh, it tells you about the damage of miseducation.